Hi, I'm Matt from Parkshaw, and I'm in the Park Home Mobile Home Holiday Lodge Static Caravan and Holiday Leisure Industry. So if you're in that industry or interested in that lifestyle, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, you might have read recently in the news about a holiday lodge going up for sale in Christchurch, Dorset for 1.5 million and asked, how is it possible that a lodge could cost so much? I'll put the link in the blurb below. Certainly, uh, a particular newspaper described it as a caravan, but it's actually really more of a lodge. And they also called it a glorified shed with free bedrooms. But again, that's just sensationalization, really, to get you to read the article. But it does beg a question. How can it be that a static caravan or a holiday lodge costs that amount? As they certainly don't cost that much to make, which is true. But then the home you're living in didn't cost the amount you paid for it to build, did it? The truth of the matter is, just like your house, statics and lodges cost a certain amount to manufacture, which can vary depending on the size and quality of the home. Then they cost a certain amount to transport to the park, but the park doesn't sell them for the amount, do they? Instead, just like your home, they sell them for whatever the local area and market can support. By that I mean, if homes in that area cost more due to the location and a fantastic view of the sea or the countryside, or maybe there's a desirable school nearby or a lot of park facilities, including entertainment, then they will invariably sell more than if your home was in the middle of a trading estate or a deprived area. Location, 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 as they say. That's what drives the price. And if a lot of people want to live there or own a holiday lodge or static caravan on that park, and demand outstrip supply, then that too can drive the price up. So, like most things in life, it's interest that drives the demand and supply, or lack of it, that sets the price. A park is gonna sell a home at whatever they feel the market will support. So yes, I can well believe that a home would be up for sale for this amount, and if someone buys it for that amount, then the park are justified in selling it for that amount. Of course, if the home does not sell for that, then the price will invariably go down. But that's really up to the potential buyers. If they think it's worth it, then they will no doubt buy it. After all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if someone falls in love with it, they will buy it if they have the funds available. But from an insurance point of view, the purchase price often causes confusion. After all, the amount you paid for the holiday home or even your bricks and mortar house is largely irrelevant from an insurance point of view. Your insurers will no doubt ask you what you've paid for the home, but that's normally to see if there's any major discrepancies between the cost of replacing the home and the actual purchase cost. If there's a huge discrepancy, your insurers will no doubt ask you more questions to find out why. What they actually do in the case of park homes, holiday lodges and static caravans is look up the manufacturing costs of a brand new model of the same or similar sized manufacturing home and then work out how much it would cost to get it delivered to your park, plus extra, as the insurers will be insuring you for next year's replacement cost, and the site clearance of the service pitch that your home is on if it's a total loss in a fire or a flood, say, and then they insure it for that amount. This is what we call new for old cover, or reinstatement cover, if you want the correct insurance terminology. So with that cover, if your home burns down, you get a brand new home, irrespective of the age of your home. The downsize is you have to insure it for the replacement cost of next year's brand new home, which of course costs more. But then this is your main home. If it burns down, you don't want a second hand cover or second run rate cover for that matter. The other alternative is second hand value or market value as we call it i.e. you get what it's worth at the time of the loss. So if the home burns down, you get the value of the home itself, i.e. the value of the second-hand home. Don't confuse this with the resale value, which of course is the value of the home on the park with a nice view you paid extra for. This is just purely the value of the home itself. Now we only offer new for old cover or reinstatement cover. And we don't want you to be in a situation where if your home burns down, the loss adjuster offers you the second hand value, which trust me, will be less than you think it is. You will be disappointed and we don't want that for our customers. So maybe you can see that there might be situations 
where an older home in areas which aren't so popular that the insurable sum insured may actually be more than the value you could sell it for. But in other situations, you may actually be insuring a home for less than you paid for it. Certainly in the example above, the insurance value will be a lot less than what the person will have paid for it, as it won't cost the insurer 1.5 million to replace the lodge. Don't forget, from an insurance point of view, we are simply talking about the replacement of the home itself. When you buy a home, you'll pay an extra for the area, the location, the facilities, bars, restaurants, play areas, the beach, and the view. Certainly in this case, you'll pay in a certain amount for the view of the sea. But from an insurance side, we are purely talking about just the home. And that's where the confusion comes in. Some people will take offence if you pay 1.5 million for a home and we only insure it for 500,000, which trust me, is more than enough. They may feel that they've overpaid for the home or getting ripped off by the park. But again, we are just talking about replacing the home itself if it burns down. The location, the facilities, the bar, restaurant, play areas, the beach, and that fantastic view of the sea will still be there. And once we replace the home, you could sell it for the price you paid for it, if you wish. Subject to market forces, of course, which are beyond our control, beyond anybody's control. So you shouldn't have lost anything. So hopefully this all makes sense and I will have answered why a holiday lodge could sell or cost 1.5 million. And hopefully I've also answered why we wouldn't be insuring it for that amount. But should you have any queries or questions, please get in touch directly or in the comments section below. And if I said anything that you feel is incorrect, please feel free to correct me. I'm more than happy to be corrected. Only a fool believes they're invaluable and I'm more than happy to admit my mistakes. After all, if you can't admit your mistakes, how are you going to learn from them? Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends, please. Call us to discuss this or to obtain an insurance quotation on free phone number 0800 731 9583 or visit us at www.parkshaw.com. And not forgetting, keep an eye out for more partial top tips in the near future. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss more exciting YouTube content from me. And that's it. Take care.